order. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Recording in progress. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, have exciting meeting followed by budget meeting. Um, we'll start things with public comment. Is there anyone out there who would like to make a comment? I'm not seeing anyone who might, but maybe. All right, I guess that's a no. Um, do we have any additions to the agenda this evening? We do not. Excellent. On to routine business items. Um, approval of minutes. I'm looking for a motion, please, to approve the January 13th, 2022 Board of Education business meeting minutes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the January meeting minutes. I can second that. Thank you, Chris. Is there anyone who has any questions, comments, or edits about these minutes? Sounds like no. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 I think that's everyone, but anyone opposed or abstaining? <laughs> That passes um, on to Board of Education Committee reports, finance. Okay, everyone. Um, the 2021-22 uh, uh, budget is 47% expended uh, compared with last year at this time where it was 49% um, expended and as a reminder, special education is an ever-changing uh, landscape. And now I'll turn over the rest of the meeting to uh, Superintendent Hecht. Thank you. If we could put up the financial report, Mr. Maselli, please. Yes, just give me a minute. I'm gathering folks from the other meeting and bringing them over. So I'm okay. multitasking, I'm sorry. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so we have a number of uh, transfers, many of which are reclassifications. Um, so the first one is, um, you know, we talked about uh, the bottle filling station that needed to be replaced and we needed a little bit more money to take care of that. Um, we had some professional development uh, that needed to happen at the high school. Um, so we took care of that with a reclassification. Um, we had um, some additional transportation costs in athletics, primarily driven by our indoor track and what we anticipate um, to uh, need for outdoor track as well. We had a number of athletes um, who did very well in indoor track, which is awesome considering we don't have an indoor track and um, we need to be able to transport them to uh, invitationals and state meets. Then we had, uh, we needed some additional art supplies. So we had a reclassification there, additional science supplies, some reclassifications for that. Um, we purchased uh, teacher Chromebook covers for the new Chromebooks that were purchased for the teachers just to keep them protected. So we had a reclass there. Uh, we needed additional supplies in English language arts at BCS and additional PE as well as math supplies at BCS. And we also purchased a Barry saxophone at Bolton Center School. Um, as well as um, a reclass and a transfer from BCS to BHS to cover the shortfall to replace the 16 desktops for the tech ed lab at the high school. And then we've got some um, projected shortfalls as I shared with you last month with regards to operational costs. This is just monies that you approve for transfer last month. It's just, we show it this month. And then as well as the $8,000 transfer that the board approved last month for the ESCON uh, services for technology. 
and then um, to fund the shortfall for the purchase of the new American history text that the board approved that they're gonna be using now. So we transferred monies for that. Um, we needed some uh, purchase for some music supplies uh, as well, as well as PE supplies and science supplies again. And then um, we needed to uh, reclass to pay for the BCS elevator renewal. And I um, wanna thank uh, Ms. Safran for a great idea about coming up with uh, creating kindergarten yard signs to let everybody know that kindergarten registration across town is happening. So that concludes the transfer portion. And that, are there any questions on the transfers before I move on? Okay. Sorry, oh, Chris, Chris I, I'm sorry. I have a question. Yep, sorry. Um, so in the Q&A that you provided for the budget, uh, there's a number of places where you indicate that supplies for next year were bought this year. Are some of these transfers related to that activity? Um, a few of them, maybe. We were also able to buy some supplies with choice monies um, that we have also. So a little, and some of the supplies that were asked for next year, we needed this year, but people were trying to be extremely frugal, but they shouldn't be going without. So I took them out of next year's budget and purchased enough this year so that we have enough for them to use for this year as well as for next year. So and that's part of the Q&A that I asked when you know, going through the budget with the administrators. Like, as I see certain things, I'll say, is this something that they need in their classrooms right now? Okay, thank you. Great question, thanks. Anybody else? Okay, hearing none. At this point, we are currently uh, projecting to be fully expended in regular education. Uh, the same in, in student support services, as well as administration support and central services. We do have savings that we have been able to actualize um, in salaries and wages and personnel benefits. Um, the savings are from new hires, projected retirements that have come in less than budget. So we had some people that had told us that they were going to retire. So we had planned for their retirement payout and they've now indicated that they are not retiring. We have some savings for ESY from the summer, as well as our current unfilled uh, positions. So we've actualized some of those savings there. And as reassured, we are 47% expended. So we will need a motion on those transfers, please. I'd like to make a motion to approve those transfers. Thank you, Ben. I can second that, Mrs. Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Ben and Chris. Does anyone have any further questions or comments about the transfers that were just presented? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstaining? Okay, that passes on to personnel. The personnel committee met last week to discuss the terms of employment for unaffiliated employees, which we will be discussing later this evening in executive session. Um, that's all. Uh, on to community meeting reports. Does anyone have any community meetings to report on? I do. I've uh, just the uh, Bolton Scholarship Fund. Uh, I attended the uh, February meeting, and I'm happy to announce that the, um, thanks to some work, uh, Mr. Giansanti and with Mr. Maselli and Mrs. Bradley, that they figured out a way for us to have our phonathon, uh, which we weren't able to do last year because of COVID, um, but we'll be able to get it back up and running this year at the high school, uh, which will be a, a change of pace. Um, so thank you to uh, the folks who were involved in making that happen. Um, and then uh, also the application for this year's scholarships will be available to 
current high school seniors and current college and graduate students uh, this early in March, hopefully March 1st. Thank you very much, Chris. Is there anyone else? Michael, you all. Um, okay, I will now turn things over to the superintendent for the superintendent of schools report. Thank you very much. So as I'm sure everyone is aware, uh, Governor Lamont announced his decision to endorse a plan uh, recommended by the commissioners of public health and State Department of Ed to eliminate statewide mask mandate in schools effective Monday, February 28th. Uh, although times, uh, at all times throughout the pandemic, the Bolton Public Schools followed health experts advice from DPH and Eastern Highlands Health District related to our mitigation measures. We also followed the law. By doing so, we prioritize the health and safety of all members of our school district community and successfully mitigated against the spread of illness in our schools while providing high quality instruction throughout this pandemic. This approach has and continues to benefit all members of our school district community during a complex and ever evolving global pandemic. And again, I want to thank our amazing teachers and administrators and staff for the outstanding job that they continue to do amidst a myriad and plethora of obstacles that continue to um, plague us during this pandemic. We certainly could not do this without them and it has been a full team effort. As stated by Governor Lamont at the February 7th press conference, the plan is contingent upon the General Assembly voting to extend through legislation his existing executive order that enables the public health commissioner with the ability of implementing mass requirements in certain settings. At this time, we are awaiting more information from the Department of Public Health, as well as any action anticipated to be taken by the Connecticut General Assembly related to this issue. If approved by the assembly, the authority related to mask requirement will fall upon the commissioners of DPH and CSDE. And if it is not approved, the mask mandate will end. So this is an evolving situation. I know the House took this up today uh, in Hartford, and I, it is my understanding that the Senate will be taking it up on Monday. And so we all, once we have all of the information, uh, I will be communicating next steps. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Does anybody have any questions for me? Chris? Um, can, could you clarify, please? Uh, if the governor doesn't turn, or if the legislature doesn't give the um, Department of Public Health the authority to issue mass mandates, um, would that mean that local boards of education would not have the ability to mandate masks in local schools, or would it be up to the local boards? Great question. It will be up to local boards of education at that point if if we are not you know, given a mandate and marching orders. Um, unless, right, the commissioner of public health gives an order that we have to continue to do it. If the powers are given to the health commissioner as they have been under this current situation, um, we would still be mandated to do that. Um, otherwise, if that does not happen, then a local board of education, if a local board does not take it up, then it becomes, you know, moot and the mandate is eliminated or the board can take it up and take a vote as to whether or not to keep masks. What is, what is the well, Bolton schools? I'm sorry, I just have a question. What is Bolton, what are you guys um, thinking along those lines? Are you for keeping the masks on? Or are you just waiting on the um, public health to kind of guide you in that regard? Yeah, at this point, we're waiting for public health. I mean, they have been the guide all the way through. And so we are waiting for continued guidance. Um, it is my understanding that, you know, there may be some uh, changes in how the metrics are viewed by the Commissioner of Public Health, and that may in fact dictate where we go from here. So even though the state governor really releases a mandate, you still have to go by the public health? If the um, order, or the legislation is that the commissioner of public health will make the determination, then we have to follow that. 
Right. So that's my that was my question. Commissioner of Public Health really is the be all end all for Bolton uh, Bolton Schools, not the governor, right? Mm, it's hard to answer that because I don't know what the legislature is going to do here. I don't know if they're going to continue the mandate until the 28th of February. I don't know if they are going to vote to not do that, at which point the governor's executive orders end, I believe, at midnight on February 15th, at which time the mask mandate would end. And at which time, at that point then, if a local board took it upon themselves to make that decision, it would be up to the board to do so, or the board remains silent, the mandate ends, and likely it would be parent choice. Cool. Thank you. Welcome. So uh, let me just follow up on this, I guess, because clearly the situation is in, in flux. We're waiting to see what the legislature will do. Um, but if the legislature doesn't give the commissioner of public health authority to regulate mask usage, then it's going to be up to the individual boards. Should we be thinking that we might need to have a special board meeting ahead of March 1st in case guys, you know, in case that happens? Yeah, I and I think that's up to for you guys 100% to decide. And quite honestly, it may mean that you need to set two dates. You may need to set a date for Tuesday night, February 15th next Tuesday, because oh. if the legislature does not take action, the mandate will end effective midnight on the 15th. So my recommendation would be that you may want to consider and discuss whether or not you want to have a meeting, on, at least set one for Tuesday night. And if the legislature makes a decision to continue it to February 28th, you may also want to consider tonight having a backup meeting. I'm trying to look at my calendar here to see, um, you know, potentially, we could potentially discuss it uh, at our 24th budget meeting. We could add that as an agenda item for that evening since we already have a meeting planned for that night. So my recommendation would be to potentially schedule a special meeting for Tuesday night in the event that they don't, continue the governor's powers for you guys to then decide as a board how you want to move forward. But that's up to you. Because if you don't have a meeting and you're silent on it, which some boards are doing and some are not, right, then it would become parent choice at that point. Why don't we make a hand if everybody doesn't mind for two seconds, like raise your hand if you want to stay silent on this matter. Okay, good. So it looks like we need a meeting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't envision a scenario where next Tuesday, all of a sudden, everyone is thrown into the wolves. I really doubt that that's going to happen. Although, from a safety standpoint, maybe it's good to schedule something. We do already have a meeting for two weeks from tonight, which is four days prior to when the next date that we're thinking about is. So um, I guess we could set a meeting for Tuesday as long as everyone was in favor of that. And then we would just cancel it as long as it's not a relevant date. A good idea. Can everybody hear me okay? My internet connection is you may want to turn your picture off and see if that improves it um so can i i can just call a meeting can i or do we need a motion no you can call a meeting i can just call a meeting can i rather than yes we don't i mean we don't need a motion yeah okay you don't and you have consensus so, anyways from the board everyone stand by but i that I really don't envision that we would uh, have this scenario, but okay. Um, all right, are we done with this topic for Unless today, for the moment? Anybody has any, so, okay. um, yep. 
Okay. Um, BCS, Mr. GR, turning it over to you, sir, for an up quick update. Uh, good evening. So kindergarten registration um, is now open. In the past, we used to have run kindergarten registration just during the month of March. Um, but similar to the idea Ms. Uh, Saffron had with the lawn signs, we're like, we need to expand this. So we've opened kindergarten registration at the beginning of February. And there's really no closing day. It's from now all the way through the summer. And by extending the window of time, it helps us to know how many incoming kindergartners to expect and to better plan for class sizes and other pieces for next year. So all positives. Upcoming events, um, Random Acts of Kindness Day is on February 17th, and we're going to be celebrating it the National Day. Mrs. Saffron is going to kick off the day talking about kindness in the morning announcements, and then the students are going to have opportunities throughout the day to put those in place. Read Across America Week is March 1st through the 4th, and is, which is always a fun week. The students love it. And we have a theme for each day, and Mrs. Saffron has been working with the PBIS committee, and some of the themes as of now are reading, hats off to reading, hat day, Oh, the places you'll go shirt day, guess who dresses a book character day and cuddle up with a book pajama day. So more information is gonna be sent out to parents very soon on that. Parent teacher conferences are coming up on March 17th and 18th. And we're looking forward to virtual conferences again. The sixth through eighth graders are in the home stretch of preparing for student led conferences. And this is the first year we're gonna be able to see it through to actually happening, which is very exciting. Uh, more scheduling information is gonna be sent out to parents about that next week. And SBAC and NGSS testing, the schedule has been solidified and the testing is gonna begin on April 25th for SBAC testing. And May 24th will be the date of NGSS testing. So the students and staff have been working very hard and I know as always, the students will do their best on the assessments. That's it for me. Any questions for Daryl? All right, hearing none, Mr. Maselli. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Hecht. Last night, our grade nine school counselor, Amy Destiny, and I presented our grade nine information to parents at the Hortus Porter School in Columbia. The presentation had been postponed twice, as I'd mentioned uh, to the board earlier. Uh, so we were really happy to finally have a chance to speak with families. There were approximately 12 families in attendance. Uh, and we were informed this afternoon that Columbia faculty will be telling those eighth grade families they need to make their final decision about their school enrollment in approximately two weeks. Um, I spent my time emphasizing our new grade nine transition support program, citing specific examples of that new structure. I also handed out little business cards with important emails, social media links, and links to our brand new website that Ms. Redner and I have created to share information specific to grade eight families. Uh, the website includes a recreation of the presentation from last night for folks who weren't there or for any of our center school families who'd like to check in. And you can see that at boltonhigh.com slash team 26. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Maselli? All right, seeing none, thank you, Joe. On to uh, my presentation of the Superintendent's recommended budget. Go to the next slide if we could, please. So the budget that I have prepared in collaboration with administrators and our teachers is focused on our 2025 strategic plan. It focuses on our mission statement to inspire all students to grow as learners, individuals, and citizens and really empowers our vision statement to embrace learning and a healthy mindset for all our students to continually build knowledge, develop skills and become, become engaged global citizens. These are the belief statements that the Board of Ed um, solidified as part of this strategic plan and talks about the components that you believe are essential for quality education that I believe that this budget supports 100%. This budget is a roadmap for our future. The priorities include maintaining Bolton Public Schools as a high performing school district, focusing on our four strategic plan goals of student success, a caring culture, talent development, and resource stewardship. The proposed budget is a 2.94% increase, and you can see that we have 2% of the budget is focused on regular instruction increase, 
2% increase in student support services, or the piece of the pie rather. For administration and business, it's 5% of the budget. Operations is 7%, salaries is 65%, and benefits is 19% of the budget. There's a dollar increase of $437 and $752 over this year's budget. This is a clear indicator of the distribution of the increase. And you can see that the largest driver is the salaries. So those are the people that we employ that provide our outstanding education to the students in Bolton. It also encompasses the benefits for our staff. We have a reduction in special education of $84,485. Again, I want to give kudos to Beth Goldsnyder for the outstanding job she does as Director of HR and Student Support Services. Admin and business support is up $60,813. Regular instruction, $3,385. And operation and services, $25,276. I also want to give a shout out to Sarah Malinowski, our Director of Instruction and Technology, and to Joe Maselli, the principal at the high school, and Daryl Giard, the principal at Bolton Center School. They did an outstanding job meeting with the teacher leaders. Teacher leaders did an outstanding job meeting with their teams of teachers to really call out and determine what the needs are for our programs for next year. And we started at zero and went from there. We have projected revenues, $206,485 in federal grants, $352,275 in state grants, for total projected grant awards of $558,760. I want to remind the board that we use choice monies to pay tuition for Bolton students who attend state magnet and agricultural schools, and we're projecting that amount to be $100,946 for next year. Our capital proposals uh, that we have put forward to the Board of Selectmen includes an upgrade of the BCS fire alarm system for 365,000. These you already approved at a previous meeting. Uh, door lock replacement for 26,000. That number is likely going to change. Uh, we got information um, from the town that that number will be much less um, because we already have monies that have been set aside in previous capital. Uh, budgets uh, for this project. So John is working on uh, getting a, a solid quote to see if that's something that we can get done potentially during April vacation and determine if we are able to remove this in total from our capital project uh, list request. Uh, storage building at Bolton High School uh, in the CAPA meeting. Uh, we put it in for three bays. It was requested that we go back and look at making it larger. So John is working on uh, getting a quote for that to bring back to our next CAPA meeting. And blinds replacement at both BCS and BHS, which I don't think is going to go anywhere. And we're going to have to at some point come up with the monies to uh, take care of that in our own budget based on uh, what was said at the CAPA meeting. We have additional uh, proposals that are potential referendum items that I've included here just because I don't want anyone to lose sight of these needs. Uh, we are up for a roof replacement at Bolton Center School. Uh, the air handlers are part of that. We have had an evaluation done to look at the potential for the cost for uh, air conditioning, all of the classrooms at Bolton Center School as part of the roof replacement because that's the time to do it. Uh, we also need to would need to replace the current air conditioning units that provide AC to places like the office, the nurse's office, and the library and such. Uh, soccer field at Bolton High School, science lab upgrade at Bolton Center School, a library remodel at Bolton Center School, and removal of the greenhouse at Bolton Center School because it leaks, it's not efficient, and it creates problems all the time. This is a look at our three-year enrollment. So actuals for 2021, 21, 22, and projected enrollment for 22, 23. And you see that we've got a slight steady incline in enrollment at the elementary level. 
really just almost a leveling out at the middle level. And uh, we had a decline in a little uptick. We've already seen it just in the last month um, at Bolton High School. Columbia enrollment, uh, we are projecting four students for grade nine and a total of 22 altogether. Uh, and on the side there, I've provided for you the enrollment numbers currently um, at Horace Porter School. So you can see that their numbers are much lower than they have been in previous years. Uh, the Columbia tuition next year for Columbia will be $13,336.66. Uh, <laughs> you can also see how that is broken out. 20% of what comes in for uh, Columbia students goes towards the general fund and 80% goes to paying off the Bolton High School bond with a projected total of $293,406 for next year. Again, uh, I want to just call to everyone's attention uh, the accomplishments for this year with regards to teaching, learning, technology advancements, all focused on access, student success, and talent development. Uh, we continue to provide quality learning experiences for all learners. Uh, through uh, this ongoing pandemic. We have continued with embedded PD on assessment practices to address individual student needs, and that's been more important than ever during this pandemic. Uh, we've had a reallocation of resources this year to create a STEAM coach at Bolton Center School, so we're very excited about that. Uh, we are in the process of installing uh, the sound field system and the updating of a student computer lab at Bolton Center School. We continue to advance our BPS technology plan, which I think is a great thing that the board has put, you know, um, a lot of um, support behind, which we greatly appreciate. We've updated um, the tech ed and the music labs. We're in the process of doing that right now at Bolton High School, as well as the teacher computers at Bolton Center School. And we have updated all teacher Chromebooks this year. This budget focuses on high quality teaching and learning, online services that support access for all students. We have a shared service partnership with EastCon, which includes our food service director and multi-service technology support. Um, as I shared with the board um, previously, we are um, talking to EastCon right now about potentially completely taking over our food service program, um, our uh, the board's attorney is in the process of reviewing a um, proposed contract for that service. And what would happen at that point is the board, uh, we would use up remaining fund balance in the food service account to pay for that contract until such time as we um, run out of those funds, at which point in time the board would then have to um, absorb the costs for that. And quite frankly, the cost is maybe $1,500 more than we're paying right now currently just for the food service director piece. So this piece would be to take over the whole program. Um, the cafeteria staff would be employees of EastCon um, and we would just simply pay a flat yearly fee. So that is something that we're looking at very seriously that I, because as I have shared with the board before, um, each year we sort of are on the edge of whether or not we're going to continue to be a self-sustaining program. We have a shared service partnership with the town of Bolton for director of facilities and the technology specialist. And as the board is keenly aware, we are not part of the Connecticut partnership plan for health insurance. This plan seeks to implement our 2020-2025 strategic plan focusing on responding to post-pandemic schooling, guiding the work of teaching and learning and maintaining Bolton Public Schools as a high-performing school district, building systems of integrated student support during and hopefully after COVID, integrating transferable skills at all grade levels, supporting teacher leadership and curriculum development and providing job embedded professional learning, and the tagline for the Bolton Public Schools, which this budget totally focuses on, is to empower, build, develop, and become. Just a reminder of our next meeting will be very shortly. 
on the other Zoom invites uh, for the budget workshop. And then we have another one on February 24th if the board does not approve the budget this evening. And then the budget is due to the Board of Finance uh, no later than March 15th, but ideally we get it to them by the end of February because we are scheduled to present to the Board of Finance on March 17th. So I want to be able to give them plenty of time to be able to review the budget materials. And that concludes my presentation for this evening. I believe we're on to unfinished business. Yeah, sorry, I was pulling up my agenda. Um, unfinished business, we don't seem to have any of that. So Correct. Uh, on to new business, resignations. So I'd like to inform the board that paraprofessional Deirdre Smith has resigned uh, from Bolton Center School. I would like to thank her for her services and we wish her well. We have a couple of retirements to announce this evening. Uh, I would like to share with the board that our director of curriculum and technology, Sarah Malinowski, has announced her retirement effective June 30th. And we are going to miss her terribly. And uh, I have spent most of my 30 year career with Sarah on and off. <laughs> so uh, I feel like my right arm's being cut off and we wish her well in her retirement. And I was notified today, uh, Beth and I were that Leanne Manning, Beth's administrative assistant uh, will be also retiring at the end of this school year. So I'd like to thank them both for their service and I uh, wish them much health and happiness in their retirement. Thank you for your service. It will be different. Um, on to BHS graduation date. Yes, I'd like to share with the board that the current Person last day of school. Topic. That the current last day of school is June 14th. And by statute, the board can set the graduation meeting for that date tonight, since that is the last day of school. Um, however, <laughs> I would like to share with the board that currently there is a bill pending regarding five days of flexibility for districts who had to close due to staffing shortages or COVID outbreaks, which does not pertain to us at this point in time, I'm not gonna wood, but that bill also includes three COVID flexibility days for any district. This has the potential to allow districts to not have to make up snow days up to three at the end of the year. So more information on this will be forthcoming if that actually happens. So what I would like to recommend the board to do is to vote to set the graduation date to be Tuesday, June 14th with the caveat that if this legislation is passed in the very near future, that the graduation date will become Friday, June 10th, because I know that our seniors would much prefer to have graduation on a Friday night than on a Tuesday night, um, and do the motion that way to give that caveat should that change happen. Um, I know that Mr. Maselli was going to be reaching out to um, the parents who are running senior uh, happenings the evening of graduation so that they would be able to try to solidify both dates till we could nail down which date it's going to be. Correct, Mr. Maselli? That is absolutely correct. I have kept them updated as we've moved through the project graduation group is the, the group we're referring to. Yeah, thank you. So I'll be looking for a motion if I could, please. I'll make a motion to set the graduation date as June 14th, um, pending any changes. Uh, I'm sorry, was it from state legislature or from- Yeah, it's so with the caveat that if the state legislature Okay, so uh, graduation to be June 14th, unless the state legislature allows for uh, snow days to be forgiven, I guess, <laughs> um, in which case it would be the uh, prior Friday, Friday June, 10th. June 10th. Thank you, Chris. Second. Thank you, Chris and Ben. Does anyone have any questions or comments? 
uh, about the graduation date. Not hearing any, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone, anyone opposed or abstaining? Okay, they can plan uh, the ever popular future business. Do we have any future business? Yes, not. Okay. Now I am looking for a motion to go into executive session for a discussion regarding the terms of employment, wages, and benefits for unaffiliated employees for 2022-23, and to invite the superintendent. I would like to make a motion to go into executive session for the previously stated purpose. <laughs> I second. Ben, is there a second? Thank you. I second. Any questions? Or comments? Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, thank you to anyone who showed up and uh, we'll be going into executive session for a short time, coming out of executive session, adjourning, and then going to our budget meeting to order. Here we are again. Now we will discuss the budget. Okay. All right. So, so are we going to be doing it on the screen, right? Correct. Yes, we are. Um, so uh, Mr. Maselli is going to pull up the budget and we are going to go through it um, page by page. Um, as board members are aware, I provided you um, with my recommended budget. Um, along with Q and A's uh, that went along with the budget itself. <laughs> uh, we have a projected budget for grants to go over with you this evening, recommendation for open choice seats, new and enhanced stipend requests. And we are about to start. So I don't know how big we can make this, but. That Q and A cheater that you gave us was very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad it was helpful. All right, so we're gonna go program by program, Mr. Maselli. So we're gonna go ahead and start on page 11. Here we go, instructional technology. So uh, this budget is, is down a bit. Um, and as you can see, um, you know, we had decrease in um, annual subscription costs for Google and um, the hardware decrease meets our anticipated needs for technology next year based on our technology replacement plan cycle. Any questions on instructional technology? Okay. Art. Um, the decrease in, in the instructional supplies line um, has to do with some supplies not needing to be ordered since um, students used fewer supplies last year. So we had some have some left over still. Uh, and there's a small decrease in the periodicals line because the teacher is currently not going to be using this resource at Bolton Center School. And then at the high school, there was a decrease in online services uh, because with the return to in-person learning, some subscriptions are no longer needed. And the increase in instructional supplies has to do with uh, this fluctuating annually based on the needs of classes at the high school. Any questions about art? Okay. On to English language arts. I don't know if you want me to go over all the Q&A or if you want to ask any questions or if you want to let me know that you're good with this page based on the Q&A. How would you like to proceed? I don't think you need to read the Q and A to explain it. That was the point of you having to do that before. Okay, thanks. And I'll post Actually, the Q and A with the budget is, itself. Actually, the point is really to just silence me and Chris. You know, from <laughs> no, that's not true. Honestly, this Q and A 
has developed nicely over the years to the point where I think it's almost unnecessarily redundant where you say the, uh, you know, we need some surprise supplies this year and we don't need them next year, you know, it's like. Right. Almost, I still have some questions though. <laughs> Good. <laughs> No, right. Maybe maybe we should just go page by page and just have us ask our questions. Would yeah. that be a good, That's good. process? That's yeah. good. All right. So any questions on English language arts? All right. Hearing none, I'll go on. World languages. Any questions there? So the program description seems to uh, suggest that French will again be offered at the middle school. Is that correct? Well, in a perfect little world, I would like to say yes. We, um, the, uh, one of the language teachers, the current duly certified teacher is retiring at the end of this year. So we will be posting for a duly certified um, person in both French and Spanish. And I'll say that I, I'm going to stay optimistic that we can find someone who's duly certified and is the right fit for Bolton. If not, we will only be offering Spanish because we will then probably only have someone that's certified in Spanish. So had to plan for in the event that we can, we'd like to. Okay. Great question. Anybody else? Okay, moving on to computer instruction. Any questions here? Chris? Uh, so the description states that for BHS, the $10,000 uh, that's budgeted is for virtual high school and Penn Foster fees. Um, it's been uh, budgeted at 10,000 for several years now. It's a rather suspiciously round number. Um, my understanding of these programs is that, uh, you know, they're used as they are needed. So if a student needs to take a virtual course and then they enroll it, do we pay a straight subscription fee that costs $10,000 or is it per course? I mean, are we actually spending out the full $10,000 each year for this item? Mr. Maselli? Yes, uh, that's actually a really good question. So there's, there's the answer is no, no, yes, yes, right? So um, you've got two different programs going on there, right? So you've got virtual high school, which is a subscription for X number of seats. Um, that number hasn't increased because we've actually decreased the numbers of seats as our enrollment's gone down. So for a for certain amount, a certain fee, we get X number of seats and we make use of those. Uh, it is also true that virtual high school doesn't bill us until... I think it was uh, maybe Casal will correct me, December or something like we didn't even know the number. So it's right. always a guess. The balance of that we hold for to, to your other point, the as needed seats. The Penn Foster would be, hey, oh, this student needs this as a credit recovery, which is kind of a different model than a virtual high school or a last minute thing. So that's why we've just kind of kept that at 10,000 because both of those numbers kind of jump up and down a little bit uh, each year. Okay. Do you have any data on how much of that? $10,000 is actually getting used year in and year out? I mean, are we coming pretty close or um, is it potentially a spot where we could find some savings? Yeah, so so the way the virtual high school works is we kind of buy into it, which is the bulk of that $10,000. Okay. Um, and we have to provide a teacher um, to keep that number down. Otherwise that number would be um, a lot double-ish of that. It's a really nice partnership. Um, quite frankly, this year we did not have because of a resignation and a change in staffing. We actually didn't have a virtual high school teacher this year to contribute. So we offered far fewer seats this year. We were really short seats. We would like to offer more because we didn't ask for additional funds in that line. We kind of managed it internally. The goal is to have a teacher, a teaching period available to donate to virtual high school next year to get us back up to the 20 seats uh, for that. And then there's a small piece of that 10,000 again, for that credit recovery type of piece, yeah. Okay, and I take it that you track the number of seats that we purchase each year and how many of those actually get used? 
Um, we we do. Miss Goldsnyder actually does a great job. Uh, the other Miss Goldsnyder, that not the one here's here, um, does a, Kelly does a great job with that. Um, we, as part of the program that we subscribe to, where we offer a teacher for to teach, you know, around the world or around the country, uh, we get twenty seats. So whether we use two, which we wouldn't, or we use twenty, doesn't matter, right? We're paying for that. <laughs> we have reduced that line and stopped paying for when I first got here. When you, you'll, you'll remember, right? Our enrollment at the high school was much higher. We were also purchasing additional seats, but the subscription is a 20 seat piece. So do we use them all? No, but that's, I mean, that's where we're at, right? That's how the subscription works. Right. But okay. So it sounds like there's not, not an option to go to a lower subscription. Level. No, no. Okay. Great. Thank you. Great question. Thank you. Anybody else here? Okay. On to math. Any questions here? Chris? Um, so the Q&A implies that the online professional group memberships are no longer needed, um, yet the budget still includes $50 uh, on BHS. So is that for a some other type of dues and fees, or is it? in there as a mistake? No, that is for the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics membership. Which is not an online one? Correct, it's it's something that teachers, right. have, you know, depending on teacher interest have, have participated in over the years, as opposed okay. to the ones we had last year, which were some additional online ones. Uh, I see, I see, okay. And um, can you explain what uh, CUTA is, K-U-T-A? Yes, uh, so CUTA is a specialized software uh, for math teachers to generate um, activities, assessments for students. So it was something that they tried out several years ago and all the teachers have adopted it because it just it's an opportunity to create a huge bank of, of problems for kids to solve. It's, it's been the most effective uh, software they found. Okay, thank you. Thank Do you. not ask me the origin of the name. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on, science. Any questions here? <laughs> Chris? Sorry, I told you I had questions. We like the questions. It's all good. Um, so I noticed that the uh, cost for the chemical disposal uh, is going up. Um, it's a pretty big jump, a 25% increase. Uh, so it just made me wonder, um, is this something that you go out to bid for? Have you looked at other possible providers of this service? No, and, who... an yeah, another great question. Um, we don't, there's kind of the service provider that kind of does this thing. Um, what we've actually found is the last couple of years we were underfunded. Uh, and at the end of the year, Ms. Carvalho was transferring funds from other things to cover it. And we realized that it's really gonna kind of be at that level so when we built the building, we had a huge disposal, right? Like stuff that had been laying around. And then we didn't have a lot of buildup. So we've kind of flattened it out. And Ms. Carval has kind of figured the, the spot where we're at the last few years. And we, again, we were underfunded the last few years. And now the goal is to now fund that line appropriately. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, and then the Q&A uh, addresses an increase in line 58100 dues and fees for BHS. However, the budget proposal shows no such increase. So I'm wondering, is the Q&A wrong? Is there something missing from the budget? Maybe the q and is wrong. I mean, that's the better option, I think. <laughs> the Q&A is wrong than something yeah. left out of the budget, but just wanted to. So that would be the Envirothon, um, and it may have been my mistake in the Q&A, thinking that we hadn't done Envirothon the last couple of years and we were adding it back in, but it may have already kind of carried it in through the budget. So that might have been my mistake in the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody else? Okay, on to, I think it's health and PE. Any questions here? All right, seeing none, on to social studies. Any questions here? Uh, 
All right, seeing none, vocational education. All right, seeing none, business education. All right, seeing none, family and consumer science. How is the uh, stove holding out or the oven? So uh, at BCS, so far so good. Thing is no, like, it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the uh, well, oven at the high school in need of, possibly in need of repair at some point? No, it's or am the, I confusing with the center school? Yeah, it's the center school replacing the huge Vulcan. That's it. Okay. Yep, that we have on that was in a um, an approved um, package a number of years ago. You know, we had it in there as items that could also be used with that bond funding that we mm -hmm. received. Um, and that thing's still going strong, so we're going to just let it keep going. <laughs> okay. And sorry, yeah, that's not in obviously not in this. Yeah, but great order. question. They just don't make it like that anymore. So John and I are fearful to replace it until we have to. Because <laughs> then, you know, we'll be replacing it every three to five years. So that, that you know, we're going to hang on as long as we can. All right, music. Chris? Okay, so the, the Q&A uh, indicates that the drop in line 56110, which is instructional supplies for BCS, was due to purchasing a trombone, trumpets, and reeds this year. Um, so I, you know, I'm not questioning that those purchases were made. We approved the transfer for the trombone or uh, the berry sacks this evening. Well, actually, that wasn't even listed there. Um, but my, I guess my question is, if we've, well, the increase, um, or rather the decrease is only $277. So uh, clearly we did not uh, buy a trombone, trumpets and reeds for $277. Um, so what I'm wondering is why isn't this budget line actually lower if we were able to purchase all of these new instruments this year rather than having to have them on next year's budget? So you're on instructional supplies, correct? Correct. So these numbers would have been much higher if we had needed to purchase the instruments. This is sort of like the going rate right now of what Sarah, you want to say something? Go ahead. Um, I, I also want to remind um, everyone there has is also a tremendous increase in music music cost. Right. So Sorry. that leveling off, and I didn't know if you had gotten to that point yet, Kristen. Um, so while Kristen was talking about so many things, but there's also that huge increase. Uh, I know that Mr. Maselli and Mr. Diard and I were also surprised when that came forward. So this is just about keeping us moving forward with being able to get the music and supplies that we need without buying the big instrument purchases that are part of our general purchases. The, the increase in goods costs has been astronomical. Right, but it sounds like from the Q&A, and, and maybe I read the Q&A wrong, but it sounds like the, from the Q&A that some of those instructional supplies were actually instruments not music for instruments, or is it just the Q&A worded? I think the Q&A is worded probably incorrectly because it was, we were probably originally wording it off of when we had those pieces in last year and we bought some instruments last year, right? Ahead of the instrument replacement cycle to have them in the hands of kids because we needed them. So I think it's just that the question and answer is worded not well. Okay. Okay. So I mean, I, where I was heading with this was that, and you know, it might be something to think about before this gets presented to the board of finance yep. is that, you know, clearly, well, the, the Q and A makes it seem like 
you know, the, the decrease was because we were able to purchase instruments this year, but clearly you're not purchasing instruments for $277. So that might lead someone to think, well, okay, so they had savings out of next year's budget, but then they found other things to add into the budget that, you know, they, they found wow. things that they could spend the money on in other yep. areas rather than simply reducing more. And you're, that you're, spot on. you're spot on, Chris, because last year we also purchased some instruments in advance similar to this year. And I listed those as just as examples of some things that we bought that we can use now. Um, but it wasn't to be a, an exact match of those items with the amount. So it was worded, um, not clearly. But Okay. So we'll yeah. fix it to your point, And we're going to fix that other question too. I'm making notes for myself along the way here of things that we need to fix before we put this out there. So this is helpful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and then one other question about music. The Q&A also notes that there's an increase in field trips for BHS, but the budget proposal doesn't include a field trips line. So I was wondering what I was missing there. Or does the increase show up somewhere else in the budget? Casal? Did I lose her? Oh. I think um, it's it it gets transportation. It's in the transportation. We start with departments, but it moves to Casal's Magic Transportation line. So that's the field trip fee is to get the kids to the competition that we hope will will happen next year. Okay, so maybe move that from that section of the Q and A to another section. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. We're still on music, right? We are. Yeah. Do you have questions? Okay. I had a question, but not till later uh, regarding the field trip. So I'll, 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 I'll wait my turn to get to that. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Bye. Anything else on music? Okay. Thank you. Moving on to tech ed. Mrs. Hack, just once, I just want to check. Is Mr. Broneal here? He is. Okay. I just got to notice that he just joined the other meeting. So I thought maybe he'd fall off and ended up in the wrong place. So I just want to make sure he was here before you continue. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> oh, you know what? When I, when I went to log on to this one, I think I clicked on the other okay. one first. I just... I was like, oh, this is, I'm the only person here. This must be the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So. All right, Tech Ed, questions here. All right, here and none, continuing education. Questions here. Okay, hearing none, library media. I have a question. Um, I guess I'm just wondering if for next school year, are we expecting online services to really increase? So Newzilla was something that we had previously purchased in Title I, Diana, great question. Um, we need to move it out of Title I and move it into the Library Media Center budget. So okay. that accounts for an increase there and we are anticipating an increased cost in subscriptions most assuredly. Now, I know earlier on we discussed, um, you know, how um, enrollments is, has been, uh, I guess you saw a decrease. And I don't remember if it was Bolton High School and Bolton Center equally or one was more. Um, so how do you take into account, like I know year over year things are costing more, but how do you equate that, right? Like how do you get the organic growth based on what you're seeing your numbers, right? So you might have had like a great enrollment year, but now you're seeing a decline. So how do you adjust your budgets accordingly? And what is your projected enrollments for 2022 and 2023? So the projected enrollments would be at the last page of your budget book. Okay. Um, in appendix F on page 59, but I believe Mr. Giard can speak to the other part of your question. Great. Yes, our, so our enrollments stay in steady actually increasing recently. And the other part is when the teachers do their budgets, the academic leaders, each year they call the companies and they get quotes and estimates okay that's it's probably going to go up 15 percent. so they they get that information um to be able to accurately build their budget cool thank you yeah, the, the other piece of online stuff is it's not some of them are billed like per, per nose right you got 12 it's, it's 12, but some are like oh it's for the whole building or it's for the district so a tick up in enrollment 
up, down, even by a couple of dozen students wouldn't change the subscription fee. Right. Gotcha. And the other thing, too, that I also want to share, because it's a great question, is just looking at the Board of Ed packet for this month. In October, when we have to report uh, for various reasons student enrollment, right, we were at 312 kids in pre-K to 5. We're now, as of February 1st, we're at 316. We've already had inquiries for additional kids to enroll just in the last couple of days, pre-K to 5. Uh, in middle school, we were at 182 back in October. We're at 183 now. Again, additional inquiries about enrolling. At the high school, we were at 249 in October. We're already up to 254 with additional inquiries about how to enroll. So we're seeing an uptick in enrollment right now just in, in the middle of the year, just since October. So you take that as that projection and you're like, okay, what, is that where you base your increase in cost depending on what category? Well, yeah, and it, it really depends. Like, for example, like Joe said, like certain um, online programs are based on, you know, a um, between this many students and this many students, you pay X. If your enrollment is then between, say, 1,000 and 2,000, it's Y. If it's between 2,000 and 3,000, it's Z and so forth and so on. Sarah? Um, and, and another piece with the library and media, what we did learn with COVID is that um, there were some online subscriptions that just were used by specific departments. And over COVID, we learned everybody loved those. And so when everybody participates it, in it, it goes into the library and media budget. So that that's where you see another, that's why there's another shift in that increase because the Library Media Center has picked up um, manning, basically manning that budget, um, that subscription for, for that, if that makes some sense. I, I'll just add that what we do do um, <laughs> is not so much, you know, enrollment in the school, but the, the usage. So what um, we're always tracking is you know, if three teachers are using it, it costs this much. But if we expand it to a fourth teacher, it's actually less expensive to buy it for the whole school and shift it to the library. So you'll see over years that does, we shift things back and forth based on the subscription package that meets the annual usage of, of folks. So that's, that is something that we do track. Thank you. Any other questions for library media? Okay, hearing none, athletics. I know that Bowen High School obviously is a bigger school, you know, more athletics uh, programs, but it's a huge, obviously a huge difference on every category. But then when you look at online services again, it's the same. And do you guys just have like a universal program for both schools and you're just piggybacking off of that? I'm just curious how that was like the exact dollar, but everything else is very different. Joe? Yeah, yeah, exactly what we just spoke about. So that is for our impact testing. So for yeah. no matter how many athletes, it's 400 bucks for each school for however many athletes for the year. Yep. I figured it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for athletics? Okay, seeing none. That concludes regular ed. Now we're going to move into student support services. Questions here. Chris? So this is kind of a question. Well, it's a question about the legal services line. And it's so I, I completely understand what the need for a $6,000 increase. I mean, it, yeah, it makes sense that we're going to see that. Um, but I also noticed that our um, the, the $6,000 accounts for the total increase in our legal services budget district-wide. Um, so I was a little curious about that because I know we've been doing negotiations off the books to try to save on legal fees. So, so this is only for legal fees for special education only. You will see a legal fees line when we get to my budget. Oh, I, I understand that. But my point is there's no decrease uh, in legal fees elsewhere. We're staying static. So mm -hmm. I was just wondering, and, and maybe I should ask that when we get to your budget is why we haven't seen a 
a decrease. So I, yeah, I'll mm -hmm. just hold the question. Okay. Thank you. We'll get to it. Yeah. <laughs> Questions about special ed. Okay. Hearing none. Extended school year. Any questions here? Okay, seeing none, tutorial and homebound instruction. Actually, can we go back to extensive school year? Sure. Um, you now there's a fairly significant drop here. Um, I assume that's largely because of COVID waning and we're not gonna need as much next year. It's so simply based case. on students' IEP needs. Okay, so the extended school year doesn't cover the um, the programs like that we ran last year. Special COVID, correct, correct. Okay. We always okay. offer um, ESY in the summer for students with special needs um, whose IEPs um, determine through a PPT that that is what the services that they need to meet their needs. Okay, so it has nothing to do with helping kids catch up from any deficits related to COVID. And Correct, right. Okay. Like, so that would program to your point that we ran last summer, we were able to run with um, ESSER dollars that we received from the federal okay. government. Thank you. Yep. Tutorial and homebound. Social work. Okay, seeing none guidance. Seeing none uh, nursing and medical. Chris? Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Ria. Okay, I just, for some reason, okay. Um, I did have a question. Um, so, so in social work, it just seems like we don't have many social workers, right? Because um, there's hardly any money spent. Beth, you want to speak to that? Is that because we just, yeah, we have, and I apologize. I don't know why my video keeps shutting off. Well, we, we have one social worker this year. We changed from a, a family marriage therapist from last year to a social worker for this year. But they're, they're not using a lot of instructional supplies. They use the curriculums that we have in place already, like mm -hmm. our okay. social skills curriculum. And okay. so there's not a, a tremendous need for, for supplies for them. Is that, was that your question, Ria? I'm sorry. I, yeah, you're kind it of just seemed like such a, yeah, it just seemed like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, all right. It seemed like such a low number. Um, yeah, they don't really use a lot of them. They use things in the classrooms. Beth, Beth can you do me a favor? They use, turn off, um, Beth, yeah. turn off your, yeah, there you go. And now talk, please. Okay. So, so yeah, so they're, they're not using a lot of instructional supplies. They're using um, like the curriculums that we already have for social skills and they're using um, things that are in the classrooms. So there's not a great need for uh, instructional supplies at this point. And we were without a person for a while last year when the budget was done this year, our, our social worker was brand new and didn't anticipate many needs. So I think that's the reason for it. Thank you. And then um, did you already get to speech and language before I finally got my... Or are you getting to nope. it? No, nope, we didn't get to it yet. <laughs> okay. So um, I think we're good with guidance, if I'm correct, and we're on to nursing and medical. Any questions there, Chris? Um, so I was surprised to read that um, the uh, defibrillators have expiration dates. So I went online to figure out why that was. And it's because the batteries, you know, well, they run off of batteries and the batteries have a, have a lifespan. Um, so my question is, are we replacing the entire AED or 
have you looked at whether the battery itself can be replaced possibly for less no, than the cost the, the, the one that we're replacing yeah chris the one we're replacing we can't get batteries for because it's so old it was ah. in the original i think it was here when kristen and i arrived correct <laughs> um, oh my goodness so <laughs> <laughs> so we've replaced them and they, they do expire actually because that you can't get parts for them. So okay. um, yeah, that is why we're looking at a whole replacement for that one. It's uh, very, very antiquated. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. Yeah. Great question. Thanks. All right. Anybody else? All right. Psychological services. Yes, I have a question. Um, you know, it's, I don't know. I know that when I read the goal and, and all that, for it sounds like this is very geared towards, um, um, you know, just wondering with mental health and everything. Is there is there a reason we're going down as far as budget, especially for the teenage group in the, in the high school? I mean, not by a lot, but I'm just curious where that came from. That um, we're spending a little bit less the next year in instructional supplies. You mean, Diana? Yeah, professional. Yeah, right. Uh, professional meetings and instructional supplies have zero. Yes. Yeah, we, we had a slight increase, right? Professional meetings and then a decrease in instructional supplies. Beth, you want to speak to that? Sure. So instructional supplies, again, we use things that are in place in the school. So we have curriculums and things that we're using. Um, so the psychologists do more with groups and where they're they're working with kids and talking with kids and especially at the high school level and not using a lot of supplies and materials. Um, so I, I think that that's the reason. And also we were down a psych psychologist uh, until last this week actually at the high school. So um, that person was not in place to do a budget um, for budget requests. So. Um, Typically in the past, I would say in the past several years, we really have not used a lot of instructional supplies because the things that we're doing are more um, working with teachers and working with kids on the um, social emotional learning kinds of things, but it doesn't take um, like things, if you will, like it doesn't take materials or supplies. It's, it's skill-based and working on, um, you know, anxiety and things like that with the kids. So, so the professional meetings, that's uh, the time of a psychologist that you're, is that what no, those are just professional meetings is professional meetings is when the psychologist but again the fees are so much lower now because so many things are now, now there's not they don't have to go out of district to to participate in professional development or their own meetings so a lot of the things are now online and via zoom or via google so the costs are much lower than they were a number of years ago so maybe i'm missing something um and maybe is this it is this it? is this the budget for mental health for um for the schools so no so also right part of the mental health budget comes in the salaries of the people that we employ right this is simply about um potential supplies that they may need to do their jobs and so the professional meetings part is the professional development component for them to go out to participate in out of district professional development that maybe you know might help them for various things um, to support students. Um, the instructional supplies, you know, Beth already spoke to that, and the tests are actual testing elements that are used to test students as part of either a PPT referral or part of an, an annual or, or a triennial review. I understand. So basically, this is about budget, not to get off topic, but I'm curious, when do we get to Board of Ed understand what, what, that, what that program looks like as far as the psychology aspect and the mental health for the students? So we've had a number of presentations. Unfortunately, I think it was prior to you joining the board about uh, social emotional learning and all of the pieces that we do for students. But that certainly is something that we could put on an agenda for March uh, or April um, to provide an update to the board. Um, be great. I'd be interested to learn uh, what, what you guys are doing. Absolutely. Yeah. We'd be happy to do that. That's a good idea, especially considering the challenges and the changes in the last couple of years. At an all time high. So definitely. Yep. Absolutely. Especially considering possible changes to mask mandates and how students are perceiving those changes too. Yep, absolutely. Well, Preparing for that too, which is around the corner. So, all right. Anything else for psychological services? Okay, hearing none, speech and language. 
Rhea, I think you had something for speech and language. No, I was just looking, but it just it seemed like it went up a lot in uh, percentage wise. But you had bought one item, you know, you bought some tests, and it yeah, blew up the, the yeah, numbers. one test, yeah, one test makes a huge difference. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think I think we out. didn't have any tests last year, though, Rhea. I think we right. were, we didn't have to buy anything last year. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're on to program improvement and evaluation. So, you know, this is a conversation we have every year, right, about professional development and our attempt to have the board fully fund that. And here we are trying to get it fully funded. So uh, just a comment, if I may, uh, it is a rather al alarming increase uh, for the in-service portion, uh, particularly at BCS. Um, but I did go back and look through some of our budgets from a few years ago, and it, it might be worthwhile pointing out in the Q&A, just for the benefit of the Board of Finance members, that we're really, the, the BCS in-service dollar figure is now, it's basically gone back to pre-COVID levels, if you will. Um, and that might be worthwhile pointing out. Agreed. I'm writing it as you're saying it. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great point. It's more of a return to normalcy where last year or the year before we saw a large decrease. 100%. Anything else here? Okay. On to central administration. So I'm gonna tackle the legal services right here, Chris, okay? Okay. So uh, we would, um, we have already used, so perfect example, right? Yes, we did off the record negotiations, but normally the board with the exception of teacher negotiations, conducts negotiations without the attorney. However, we receive the materials from the attorney. So that, that cost is always there. That cost does not go away for us, right? So there's that piece. There also is an increased cost in legal fees that we have experienced that are COVID related. The board is aware of a um, federal suit that was filed that we have had to pay thousands of dollars to uh, represent the board because every board in Connecticut and New York and other places in the country were named in this suit. The suit still is not done. So I think that we would be short-sighted at this point to reduce that line based on what we are currently experiencing. Okay. Um, thank you for that explanation. I did have a couple other questions about central admin. Um, can you talk about uh, what we get from frontline for $9,000 each year? What, what, what actually do they do? And is the price based on the size of the district? Um, is it, do we have other options? Uh, frontline, I guess, is the uh, substitute services. Sarah? It, it's our, no, um, so frontline is our, um, it's the HR as far as the enrollment, I mean, as, as far as our, um, what's it called, it's called Apple Tracks. Apple it runs Tracks. that. Apps. It also, it is also um, our substitute service, like tracking those pieces. So it has combined service is there anything else to solve? Because I know the services have changed. They bought out different ones. IEP Direct 504. IEP Direct, yes. 504. Yep. Yep. So it's a so host it's a, of services that it provides. So Applitrack is our um, HR platform. So when someone applies for a job in the Bolton Public School, Schools, it goes through Applitrack. And that's how we receive all of the applications electronically through this system. 
so app track is part of frontline it is and now I, yes and i believe asop is too which is correct which is one for personnel correct to call in for their absences and other pieces like that so it's a variety of different pieces that it provides services for for us okay so is from the q a it looks like some of the chart some of the costs uh, like Applitrack um, is in included under, well, is it included under? I, mean, I guess what I'm, what I'm getting at is, is the $8,842 that's in the line for substitute services, is that related only to substitute services or is that covering um, Applitrack? That's just and the substitute services. That was just one part of Correct. services that, okay. Um, so what actually is involved? I mean, what, what are we getting for nearly $9,000? Is that, are they just calling people to see if they can come in to be a substitute? It's a platform that we used um, that houses the substitutes. They can go on and they can view the open jobs and then select the jobs. Um, the teachers can also go on there and post information for the subs. It's also the platform that we use currently to request time off, absences, sick, vacation, personal, all that. That goes through this platform. But presumably those additional services you mentioned are not included They're not part of the this. This is just pure um, ASOP, pure substitute um, absence management system. Okay, and are, are there other alternatives? I mean, is this something that we we bid out and you compare to? It just seems like nine thousand dollars is quite a lot of money for calling, you know, to setting up for setting up a, a substitute service. Well, so it's both ends, though, right? It's our end when teacher X has a sick day, they call into ASOP and, and they put in the system that they're sick. Then it gets noted in our HR system, counted against their sick days. And then it gets noted that, that a sub is needed. So pre-COVID, <laughs> right? All districts in the area, with the exception of Manchester, were using ASOP. So substitutes could go into one platform to put in their information to note that they wanted to be a sub and then they could apply to the different districts through this one system. So it tried to streamline the substitute process. Manchester at the time was using Kelly services, but you know, I don't know what's happened since COVID, right? And, and I think that's something that we had talked about at one point about going to something like that, but the cost for us was like 30, $35 more per day per sub. Okay. if you recall, to do that. So this is a far more um, cost-effective way, especially being also that it's part of a regional type system to try to garner substitutes as well as manage on the HR side of it on our end. Right, okay. I guess so if, because you are trying to attract good substitutes and Correct. so if you had a some sort of a custom system of your own, Correct. It would make it harder for them to find. Okay, that 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 that's, that makes sense. Um, my other question: uh, Do you happen to know offhand what services we're getting from Cabe these days? Um, so they host our online policies. So that is a major service that we receive from Cabe. Um, mm -hmm. They still provide information to board members and. They provide online trainings, you know, if board members want to take advantage of that. But, but the large portion of that has to do with our online policies. And is that, I'm trying to remember, how I, sorry, I don't have the exact dollar amount that we are sending to CAVE. I can't find it offhand, but. Because um, I can find that for you. Yeah, it, it's, it's about 5,000. Okay, so, I mean, we have our own website. Is it not possible that we could 
have somebody figure out how to. Not right now. Sorry, 4,000. I mean, because we could maybe pay somebody four or $5,000 to come up with a system that would allow us to have our policies on our own website and then save that expense year I mean, year. we could do that. I mean, if the board wants to do away with CABE services altogether, we can certainly reduce the budget by that, um, whatever that total amount is that we're paying for CABE services. Then I gotta figure out, you know, how we do that. Yeah, I believe that part of it is a smaller part. The $4,000, that's for like the overall membership dues. Okay. So it, it's smaller than the, the policy piece. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm at the point where I would propose we cut this out of the budget, but I just want to, you know, make sure that we are getting value for this service and not spending thousands of dollars each year for something that we could maybe do in-house. So I can have, Casal will break out, she'll find, she'll get together what the CABE costs are and send that to me and I will send it off to all of you so you can see, you know, each element of the CABE services that we pay for and how much it is. And then you guys can make a decision from there on how you want to take care of that, you know, what you want to do with that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about central administration? Okay, hearing none. School insurance. Chris? Uh, how often do we go out to bid for or get quotes on our property and general liability insurance? Casal? Right now we're in with the town and we're using Kerma. So we have not gone out to bid, but Kerma is the one that represents most of Connecticut. Okay, so the idea there being that they are going to negotiate the best possible rates because it's they're representing a huge consortium. Correct, and we okay. also have a broker with the town USI who also um, will help us when we're taking a look at at this policy as well as for cyber and stuff so they haven't made any recommendations to say hey you know leave karma because they're not the best bang for your buck we haven't heard that come through yet thank you for explaining that correct they also will help us you know same thing with the data breach they're the ones that will go out there and get the best pricing um to fit our needs every year. Thank you. Any other questions on, on school insurance? Okay, seeing none. Uh, building administration. Chris? Um, so the cost of graduation is going up by $500. The Q&A uh, I think all it says is that graduation, cost of graduation is going up. It doesn't really explain uh, why it's getting more expensive. Could you uh, shed any light? Yeah. So the big expenses in there are, you know, the photographer to get the pictures of every child because they don't pay for those. We provide the image. Uh, the flowers, we don't, are crazy prices. Uh, we do, as you, you've you been to graduations, we do that. Uh, and the caps and gowns. So those are all. Um, and, and, you know, the, the class itself, the students, the families contribute to some of that. And we're trying to, from an equity lens, really trying to, uh, to work on those numbers and carry more of the burden in the budget, um, than have that fall on family. So I've, that's, that's the rationale for the increase. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to improve that Q and A too. <laughs> Got that, Mr. Mazzoni? <laughs> All right, moving on. Fiscal services.
All right, seeing none, systems management. Do you feel that with the increase we've made in um, you know, contracted services from CRAC and EastCon that we are now at a level to adequately support our technology needs? I mean, I know we're already having a fairly big increase here, but is that gonna get us to where we need to be or are we still gonna be short? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Um, we are increasing um, from this year. You know, we started with the number of days this year. I think it was 100 days, if I'm not mistaken, Sarah, right? Uh, and we're bumping it up um, to 100 and, Sarah, can you help me? 20, 40. Yeah, 100 and I wanted to say about 35, another, like almost another month out of it. So, um, you know, I can't tell you that that's really going to fully meet our needs. I don't think we're going to know till next year once we evaluate it at this point in time. I'm, I'm hopeful that it's going to better meet our needs than it does this year. I'll tell you that. <laughs> mm. Do you have a sense of, I, I'm trying to figure out how to word this because I don't want to, you know, to disparage, uh, people who provide these services, but how much of it is, you know, things that might be fairly routine, like upgrading, updating operating systems, and how much of it is troubleshooting when teachers and students have issues? I mean, is, is there a way so there's that- there's two pieces here. CREC yeah. is the backend piece, if you will, right? It's our servers, it's our upgrades, it's putting in a new lab, it's those pieces, right? The ESCON piece is the day-to-day, -day, this isn't working, this is broken. How do I, how do I, you know, why are these four Chromebooks not working? Kids need to get on them. It's the day-to-day -day operations, if you will. Did I say that correctly, Sarah? Yes, you did. So we had and, two and, separate and there's that networking of of with all of our online services too. Right. And we actually have both um I mean, it's mostly with CREC, but then some of that maintenance also is helped out with EastCon. So, um, it, it, yeah. It's a lot. A one-to-one -one district is, you know, we're, we're a one-to-one -one district. And we have thousands of devices now when you talk about um, how many people are accessing the, the our um, wireless services. If you think about all the different devices within the classroom from the desktop to the smart board to teacher Chromebooks, to student Chromebooks, to it, it, it it's, we're, it's, it's, it's a, a lot. lot. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Anything else for systems management, anybody? Okay, on to contracted salaries and wages. I'm sorry, Chris. Uh, no, that's okay. I have, se I have several questions in this area. Um, so the increase for administrators is, as a percentage increase, is quite a bit higher than the percentage increase for teachers and admin assistants. I I'm wondering if part of that is because some of the administrator contracts have been rewritten so that the mileage is no longer a separate thing, but is now part of salaries. Does that Correct. account for part of the increase here? It does, yes. Okay, I would wondered that. Um, and then could you explain how exactly the stipends increase? Um, part of the Q&A, I think, indicated that the co-curricular and athletic stipends are increasing in part um, because of uh, contractually required increases. Um, and I apologize, I can't remember from it's the two last pieces. teacher contract. Yeah, right? so if pieces. you could talk to that. Yeah, so um, 
maybe we should go to stipends right now so you guys can take a look at that right now so um thank you joe right on top of that i appreciate that so if we could make that bigger though joe because it's really small okay so can we make it a wee bit bigger thank you so each year the stipend committee meets and it consists of um, members of the teachers union, teachers and administrators. And what happens is staff brings forward, um, hey, I did chess club for the last year gratis, which is usually how we get a new club added. Somebody starts something, they do it for a year without getting paid. It you know, takes off, let's say it takes off, right? And so then the next year they come back and they say, you know, it's really this number of hours, it's this number of days, this many kids, whatever the case may be. And if the stipend committee determines that it's something that, you know, we should keep going and that, you know, it's good for kids and all of those pieces, then they um, assign a point value to it based on the time factor, how often it's offered. Am I saying this all correct, Jen? I'm watching her nod her head. Yes, right? How am I doing? Okay. Did I forget anything in that part so far, Joe or Jen? Joe? No, number, of, number of kids being supervised is the, other, the other piece yep. of that puzzle. Yep. Right, and then the number of students. So um, there were some requests that were already denied by the stipend committee that don't even make it to me because the stipend committee denied it for various reasons. Um, so the enhancements that you see before you are for the capstone coordinator, um, to go up two points for the music band K-12 director to go up three points. And I'll just start, I'll go kind of one at a time. So capstone coordinator, there's a lot more to it now, Joe, you want to speak to capstone and why there's more to it? Right. So from an instructional standpoint, we have shifted the start of capstone to the junior year. So that means that those capstone advisors are now working with two grades of children uh, as opposed to one. So that's why uh, the stipend committee moved that enhancement forward. Okay, you wanna then speak to the music band, please? Right. So I can actually, if you look at the music band CTE health and world language, um, those uh, leaders were only receiving one point more than a leader who only worked in one of our buildings. And we thought that the the extra meetings, the extra work to cover two buildings uh, was worth a four point differential than a single uh, as opposed to the one point. So that's why they we approved the stipend committee approved the three point bump for each of the leaders who work in both buildings. It was an, it was a matter of equity for those. Um, should I keep going? Yes, please. Yeah. So then the 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 coaching pieces that you see there. Uh, most of them fall into the category of trying to be competitive, right? So we try to attract and retain coaches. Uh, we charge Mr. Hummelson with researching both like NCCC, but really focusing a little more on the geography, right? So it doesn't matter if you're East Granby and you're in the NCCC, it's so far away, it's, it's not really a valid argument. So he looked at the kind of the surrounding areas and what they were being paid. Um, a real anecdotal example, and I won't give you a name, is we have a uh, uh, one of our, our faculty members here who's an outstanding coach and doesn't coach here, keeps coaching where they have coached for years because the money is almost double, right? So, and and I get that faculty member likes to tease me about that almost daily during the winter season. Um, so we, we're, we, the stipend committee, uh, approved these enhancements of two points or one point to try to close that gap to be competitive, to attract and retain quality coaches. The only exception to that explanation is um, we had gotten up to, you know, how successful our cross country and our, and our track programs have been. And, and I'm measuring success in number of kids. So our winter piece has really taken off and we're looking for a third adult. So a second assistant uh, to supervise the winter and kind of match the model that we're using in the fall for cross country and in the spring. So that's coaches. Joe, can you give me sharing capability? Can I share right now? And can you stop so I can share the comparison so they can see um, what we're talking about here? Can you guys see that okay? <clears throat> so you can see, um, although I don't know why the difference isn't showing just, up here. But just widen, widen that column, Kristen. That's why it's giving you pounds. Just widen column H. We're not hiding Glastonbury numbers. Yeah. Yes, no, we're not. 
Um, so you can see, you know, with the exception of one district, we're way, there's a, a quite a discrepancy uh, in what we are paying our coaches. And so this is an attempt to get us to be more competitive because we want our teams to be competitive and we want to have coaches to coach our teams. Now, to be fair, most of the schools listed on here are not schools that we would be competing against. It, it, no, exactly. Right. So, and that was, and maybe I wasn't clear. So instead of looking, we usually compare to NCCC, right? But for this, if we're trying to attract employees, it's more of a geographical attraction because for a few thousand dollars, the coach isn't going to travel an hour, you know, right. five minutes or whatever. So that's why for this, we looked more of the geographic representation, not the NCCC relationship. And that's not totally an apples to oranges comparison either, because we used to play in the Charter Oak Conference with Ram and Tolland. Right. Right. And we do play against Vernon. <laughs> right. Okay, so I just, I wanted you to be able to see that for, for point of reference for, you know, this is the pool we're drawing from and that's why we selected surrounding communities. Um, uh, continue. Okay, yes, so uh, the chess club really fits into exactly what Kristen was describing. Here's a club that's been running through years. The numbers of kids have grown and grown. It was maintained uh, virtually through the, uh, through the pandemic. So uh, the stipend committee felt it was appropriate to now, for the first time, uh, offer a stipend to that particular uh, coach. Uh, and then the testing coordinator for the NGSS. So, uh, you know, SAT, PSAT is managed through guidance. But when we look at our AP um, testing program, we have had a stipend for that, a substantial stipend for many years because there is so much work involved with that. The NGSS, that's, so that's the science testing piece. Uh, has become uh, more intense. There's a lot of coordination, the computer and training and all those kinds of out of school things for that coordinator. And that's why the stipend committee approved one point for that coordinator. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for this very thorough explanation. It, it definitely helps me uh, have a better sense of, of why we're seeing such large increases um, in this area. Because uh, I was definitely concerned, and it was the one area of the budget that was really giving me pause. Um, you know, because I, I, I went back and looked through all the budget books that I have just to kind of see. And, you know, athletic stipends, they've increased 50% uh, in the past nine years. Um, and yet the teacher salary line has only increased 17% over that same period. Um, but our student population is 10% lower than it was nine years ago. So I, I'm just having a little bit of trouble understanding why we are spending so much more money on stipends when we have fewer students, um, when teacher salaries aren't going up at the same rate. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't, I wouldn't dispute that that any of these extracurricular activities are are great opportunities for our kids. But I, I guess what I'm wondering is, can you provide the board with, you know, some sort of data to support that we are actually seeing increased numbers of kids participating in the various clubs, and that I know we've heard that the you know, the number of kids going out for indoor track has been increasing, but I don't know that we've seen hard numbers to back up the claim that we need a third or second assistant coach. Um, I would certainly feel better supporting this ask if I had some of that data that I could, you know, if, that I could use to, to justify these, these increases. Is that something that you can get to us? Joe? Yes. Yeah, so actually, you know, as we're looking at, at the additional coach, it really is in that one area. So it's, we can I definitely get you those numbers. That's, I was actually a little taken aback when, when I found out how big the numbers were, right? So that definitely, um, remember that it always is going to creep up a little bit because there is an association with the teacher's contract. So maybe yep. this is some from, for some of our newer board members just to, so everybody's on the same page, right? There's going to be an annual increase 
associated with the teacher's contract, which is why the stipend committee talks points, not dollars. Okay. Um, so um, we can also, you know, we can show you the, I mean, the list of club, we don't really track numbers of kids in clubs, the numbers of clubs, there have been more over the years, Mr. Davey, absolutely, because we've shown that there's, you know, people are doing it, but at the same time, there's clubs that we no longer fund, right? So mm -hmm. um, there's a couple that just, it's not, haven't been happening, either lack of student interest, lack of teacher interest. And so we're not, you know, so there's that savings, which isn't necessarily reflected in the percentage increase in the budget, but is a financial savings. So is there any area other than the, the track piece, which is the new coaches over the last couple of years? That we're asked that you're that data you're asking for that and you probably want a copy of that um, spreadsheet on the the coaches comparisons are those the two data points you're looking for well i, I mean given your answer it actually raises some concerns for me i you know if we are seeing regular increases for for these stipends but you're not tracking the number of students who are participating then how do you know whether whether we need to continue the stipend at all. Yeah, no, that's, that's a fair question. So uh, Daryl and I both sign off, right? So we know, I may not know how many kids are in chess club, but I know chess club is meeting and there's six or eight kids in there, right? Just anecdotally. Um, if, if chess club isn't meeting, we're not, we're not approving that stipend because we actually appoint people every year, right? So Beth is the chess club person because I know she did it last year. I know she's got kids doing it this year. If that if that's no longer happening, we're not appointing a person for that stipend position. And that is actually reviewed annually. So that's how, that's how there's the, the checks and balances of who's getting paid. Daryl. And to add to that, Chris, um, the teachers who do these clubs and stipends, they fill out a form if they're, if they're looking for an increase or an enhancement and they have to have a rationale. It's like it was 12 kids. It's now 18 kids. I used to do, five hours a month and now I'm doing eight hours a month. So they can provide us a full breakdown before we meet as a stipend committee so we can make a true judgment. We deny quite a few because we're like, eh. Yeah, we're tough. I have more hours, but it's truly less kids or a portion of it's during the day. You know what I mean? Like we look at all angles of, of the form that they fill out. So I have a question. You've both mentioned several times a stipend committee. I know with our contract, the stipends are all negotiated with the teacher's salaries. Who is the stipend committee? Uh, good question. So uh, per the teacher's contract, the stipend committee is, it consists of the athletic director, who's the, the chair, uh, the two principals, uh, and then representation of the teachers uh, in both buildings. Um, and that group gets together typically once a year, but sometimes if something comes up, uh, we'll, meet, we'll meet additionally. But we typically meet once a year and review um, the requests for enhancements, so more points, or for something new. Um, and we we say no a lot because what we do is for a new stipend or even for an enhancement, we ask the 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 applicants to say, well, how does that compare to something else that's that's going on? So if we're going to assign a, a point value, we kind of want to make a comparison to those those factors that Kristen was talking about. You know, how many kids, how frequently, and what's the time commitment. I think one thing though we could get for you right now, right, is a list of all of the clubs that we offer, how many kids are in them or projected to be in them, because that might be something that's offered in the spring and not now. We certainly could get you the data on the increase for indoor track for sure. And to your point, we will start tracking it yearly. Both Daryl and Joe are going to create spreadsheets and they're going to start with this year. And it really isn't necessarily fair to compare this year to last year or the year before to be quite honest, right? Um, but moving forward, we'll be able to provide you that data. Daryl and Joe, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, it's not, it's not a problem. If we know ahead of time, it's, it's, it's easy to collect as we go along. Sure. Yep. Perfect. I think that would be greatly appreciated and it would certainly help to make the case for it. But, you know, I, I keep going back to this discrepancy between how much our stipends have increased over the last nine years compared to our teacher salaries. And which is why I started with my initial question was, you know, how much of the increase is, is from the contracts? Because if the contracts over the last nine years have, have only resulted in, what did I say, a 17% increase, how is it that 
our stipends have increased 50%. At the same time, our student body has decreased 10%. It just, it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, we have added stipends over the years. We certainly have done that over the course of the last decade, for sure, 100%, yep. right? Indoor track being a perfect example, right? Adding things, kids come and say they have an interest, people start it, they do it for a year. Robotics is another perfect example, right? We started with robotics at the high school, then we also added robotics at center school, right? Then we added, you know, we've got Envirothon and we've got the, um, Oh, we had history day for what, you know, you know what I mean? Like we've had a variety of different things added over the years because we've had student interest demonstrate that that's something, you know, that kids wanted to participate in. So we have had ads um, and certainly I can go back through the last few years. I don't know how far back I can go, but to put together sort of a, a spreadsheet, if you will, or some information about the ads that have happened right? So you can see what the interests are. I think that that would be helpful for you to see. Um, we'll see how far back, how many years back I can go. Um, I'll do my best to go as far back as I can. Um, at but also, that would also help justify the increase. I mean, yes, if we're having 10 more clubs than we did 10 years ago, then that right there right. could explain, you know, that could be, depending on how many points the stipend is worth, could be forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. So, okay. Yeah. Yep. The, the other thing you'll see, just again, total, total transparency, uh, when we provide you that spreadsheet, you will see ch uh, cheering coach, right? For example, right. Mm -hmm. uh, zero students for the last several years. However, I'm not going to recommend that we cut that from next year's budget, because what if there is a group of students and an adult who step up and want to do that? So although that won't really be an expense, it's sometimes a budgeted item because interest in clubs waxes and wanes year to year. Um, so that's like just another moving part that I just wanted to kind of explain to everybody that won't won't be trans won't be uh, readily understood when you just look at a spreadsheet. But that's the reality of of some of these activities. So, that raises a good point. I, I'm sorry, I cut someone off. I was just going to say I do still wonder why this isn't negotiated with the teachers' contracts because I know in in many districts that is the case. The stipends are all negotiated. Yeah, the point but, values are. Okay. Yep. The point values are, are part of that. That's part of the contract. That's why as a stipend subcommittee, we only talk about points. We don't talk about, about dollars, right? Okay. So maybe it's fair to assume that 17% of the 50 or so percent increase in the stipends can be attributed to the contracts and the yeah. remaining 33% is more clubs, new clubs. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. So Thank let me you. review what we're going to provide, right? I'm going to send you the sheet, the comparison for athletics. Um, hang on, I'm writing notes to myself. Um, I'm going to give you the added um, stipended positions as far back as I can go within my tenure here. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, Daryl and Joe are going to provide me with a list of clubs and athletics and the number of students involved or projected number of students involved in each for this year. And moving forward, they're going to track that each year. So next year, they'll be able to provide you this year and next year's information when you see this for, for budget purposes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Other things here. So I, I'll ask the question I ask every year, <clears throat> or at least the last couple of years, that this is budgeting for a full complement of teachers and all staff positions being filled, whether correct. they're filled now or not, correct? 100%, yes. Thank you for the question. And I'm to, hoping for, that, full, that we're fully- For full complement of the courses and, and, and- Programs. Programs that are currently offered, 
not in any not beyond that or expansion beyond that at this point because we can't correct. fill what we call currently offer right. correct correct this budget supports current programs and projection of fully staffed for next year thank you scott okay i'm going to move on then seeing no other questions to personnel benefits questions here Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna move on to operations and maintenance. Questions here. So this is Go ahead. like the, the repairs and maintenance budget. This is John's budget. Correct. Buildings and grounds. Yes. So over the last couple of years, we've made an awful lot of transfers during the course of the years to supplement the maintenance budgets for things. Mm -hmm. And so that seems to be a trend that's predictable. And yet the increase is only $1,300. Well, so, but we also, we have a large increase in purchase property services um, and that's, you know, a lot of our fees for a lot of the uh, operators that fix things for us or that maintain various items okay. for us, right? And that is an area where we've had to transfer money into okay. uh, over the last few years for sure. So hence the large, you know, increase there. Um, you know, the repairs and maintenance piece, that piece, a lot of that has to do with stuff that we can do in-house where we can just go get a part and the guys can fix it, right? Okay. It, All right. So, right? so the, in, the two are together then. Right. And, and, and then- In those transfers. Yep, yep. And then, um, you know, you see a, a large increase too in our operations and maintenance supplies because that's another area where we have been transferring money. Okay. So the- so If I can add to that. Yes, please. Okay, so the purchase services that original line, those are the ones that are contractual and they're recurring. So we, those we have a relatively, you know, good handle on. The second line repairs and maintenance, those are the unpredictable, no clue. You know, this breaks, we gotta call someone in. So those are, that's your unexpected. And the bulk of this year's transfers have been into that line where, you know, the right. HVAC yeah. system is down, electrical needs repair, the light pole needs repair, this needs repair, that needs repair. It's stuff that we had, we didn't know. So that's what that line kind of represents. Um, and the supply line, a lot of that has also increased. That's actually the line that um, if we need to buy parts and can do it ourselves, that goes into the supply line. The okay, first so two the, lines are all purchase services. We just break it out just to kind of be able to show you, you know, this first line is one that we can best guess. The second line, we have no idea. The second line and the, the third uh, supply. Correct, sorry. and the supply. Those are more Correct. tied together. Uh, Correct. Things break and we got to go find yep. parts and people to fix it. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, to look at that together then the, you know, it's a little bit, Still a healthy, yeah. it's a healthy number, but we certainly didn't hit it the last couple of years. We when you're preparing, it. I'm sorry, Scott. Yeah, go ahead. When you're preparing this budget, do you look back at previous year's budgets and see how much we've had to transfer in? I mean, it seems like if you took an average of the last five years of what has actually been spent in this area, couldn't you take an average, you know, and, and use that as a basis going forward? A lot has changed because we're repairing and we're trying to maintain a lot more now. So not really. 
but wouldn't that at least be a a a, a base a base level? Right now, so, we've used the last two years as 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 a base, and some of the stuff okay. that has become more standard, we've moved it up into that we know line, out okay. of the we don't know line. So every year, it gets looked at. So, you know, with the change of, of sharing John with the town, that's why we've taken the last two years that John has been with us to, to use that data based on where we stand now with John as our facility director and that information. And presumably okay. maybe we're catching up on deferred maintenance. Correct. So but, there's, yeah. there's that piece too. Big cost. In the high school hitting that age where things are starting to to fail, frankly. Yeah. Um, okay. So sorry to be contrary, uh, but I'm I'm just looking back at earlier budgets, and so we're proposing thirty three thousand nine hundred for this coming fiscal year. That's uh, five and a half thousand dollars less than we budgeted in FY twenty eighteen. So it seems like we used to spend more in this area. We well, cut but back. you have to remember though that we were also, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Call to your for your consideration, right? We had uh, we had fixed lights. So we had the 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 we had to pay that piece off, right? So that piece we've paid off now. Casal, you want to speak to that? That the, the lighting piece, that's part of the electricity. Right, but so you'll see, right, in electricity, we have savings this year. Correct, because the load no, no, is no longer there. My, my point Did is I that- Did I misunderstand? Sorry. Yeah, is, is that five years ago, we were budgeting more for repairs and maintenance than we are budgeting now. And yet we're, each, the last two years have been transferring all kinds of funds into this line, line item. So, uh, it seems like if if we were looking at you know maybe a longer uh, historical window, it, it might give a a better uh, a longer historical window of what we've actually spent, not just budgeted. Um, that that might be a bit more useful than just looking back two years. So is that something you want? We can we can take a look and grab some of that info because some of the repairs they're going to kind of be one-offs and and stuff which is what that line represents but we can try to go back and see what we can well I, I would make sure we compare all the, the three numbers we've been talking about we make sure we compare all three of those if you said we've increased potentially have increased the purchase services to cover some of that I just you know make sure it's the, if we're going to do this it's the whole picture but I mean, I, I can understand the two year because it's a different approach to maintenance Correct. Um, from what we had prior to that. And we'd have to look, you know, if we got much further back, how much money was returned from that and not spent versus, Correct. you know, what Correct. was budgeted. So I'm, I'm comfortable with the two years because it's a consistent approach to the maintenance. Okay. Um, but I, it would be, you know, if it's possible to see, what was actual spent versus what these budgets are. And I understand that, you know, you start a new budget every year, which is the proper way to do it, not just, but in some of these where we, we have had to all these transfers, it help, it'll help explain them moving forward. You know, like that's always the, kind of the concern is why didn't you budget for this properly? So, and the biggest answer is you don't know it's gonna break, but. Correct. That's why some of that line in the past, you know, we, this is enough to cover it and right. it's a return. And I, yeah, I get that. It's got to be a heavy conservative budget, but Correct. I'm also concerned that we don't have now that surplus in the electrical budget that we had before and, you know, right. that we don't yep. necessarily have one of those sources to, to, to take from. All right. So I will have Kasal and John put together actuals versus budgeted um for those pieces um for the last two years and i will uh get that off to you as well okay to the board okay okay
So I have a question on a different topic or similar, whatever. Uh, the electricity number, which the Q and A, you know, the decrease of fourteen five or approximately, um, says us to pay off the lighting upgrade, which I'm glad to hear we're done with. That was from a few years ago, whatever. Uh, electricity this year, we have had a couple of large, pretty significant transfers out of electricity. Are we projecting that electricity is going to be going up next year? Uh, budgeting conservatively? Um, I'm just wondering what the, what the basis for that number is. We're, we're hoping that it'll come in around, let me see, what did I say it was gonna be? We're estimated at, at 18 cents. At eight, yeah, 18 Correct. cents with 1.3 million kilowatt hours. Correct. It's conservative. Hopefully the two numbers will balance itself out between the rate and the usage. Because sometimes, you know, if the rates come in a little higher, but then our usage is a little bit less, that's what's kind of been going on. It's kind of been, you know, one up, one down, one up, one down. So we've been kind of okay with having um, some savings there. Um, in this next budget, I think we should be okay. I mean, our contract is locked in. The only side that we don't know is the delivery side, the Eversource side. So we know half the number. Will we have so, so potentially the it depends on the, the, the temperature, it depends on what the the weather and the usage ends up being. But the bulk of this reduction is a one time reduction Correct. because we're we're not paying paying for the lighting pro project. Correct. Correct. And the rest Correct. is just the regular gamble of what it's gonna cost and how much we're gonna use. One hundred percent. Correct. Okay. It's, it's a little bit I of a crapshoot. <laughs> yeah, I guess I was not clear on how much is known versus how much is unknown. Thank you for providing more clarification. Yeah. It, it seems like the investments you've made in energy efficiency must have paid off because uh, back in FY15, we budgeted $236,000 for electricity and we're at 237 now, so. Good job. That was one of the main drivers of why we did those projects because I knew that there would be cost savings involved in that in, you know, in the long run. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else in this category? All right, on to transportation. I had a question about the gasoline. Mm -hmm. um, it, I think it, yeah, it says the uh, estimate is uh, 248 or something around there. Um, for gas, I, how reliable is that estimate? Because gas at, you know, the gas station is at least a dollar higher right now. Is this a realistic uh, projection? Our prices are typically, don't typically line up with what you're seeing um, ex outside of this contract. Right. They, they don't really run one for one. I mean, because you're looking now and it's $3 and something. Well, we, we've never paid $3 something. You know, it's a dollar something, it's two dollars something. So these estimates, it's what the vendor is currently projecting so for us. Granted, okay, that so could be changing as we speak. I mean, you know, we maybe it's different this week if we have to ask now than, you know, um, a month and a half ago. But the market is just, we're going to be chasing it. Do we lock in a rate? For a whole year. Um, the decision usually we lock in gas we typically lock in um, calendar year um, and usually you know Krog 
is the consortium for the um, the towns. Um, we usually have them, and they do auction, reverse auction. They go out to bid for the group. Um, this year, we've decided, or will decide that the prices are in such flux that it doesn't make sense to lock in. Hmm. Right at this time. <laughs> Correct, right at this okay. time. So we're looking um, for, if it happens to be, hey, we think we should lock in now, at that point, I believe, you know, is when the town will set, will lock in and then we'll have a better pricing. But right now the consensus is, it's not gonna be to our advantage to lock in because it's high. We think it's high. You think we, the 242 is high or that it's higher currently than 242 and you hope it will drop? No, we think it's gonna drop from what we're, we, we hope. <laughs> There is yeah. hope that it will drop from what we are projecting here, but we don't know that. So we're going to ah. project this. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, this is the best guess. I mean, they're the yeah. experts. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we can't do better than what they say we should probably budget for. Right. right. No, I understood. I just wanted to understand how, how we arrived at that number. So thank you for the explanation. Yeah. You're welcome. Anything else here in transportation? Okay, moving on to the appendices. So Appendix A, as you know, that's those are our capital requests. That's what we've requested. Capital has had one meeting. We have another meeting coming. I'm just not sure when. Uh, Appendix B are all of the requests that, that were made and then the uh, cuts that were made um, by me at my level. And then Appendix C is the estimated education revenues to the town of Bolton. And again, these amounts are based on the governor's proposed budget for the biennial budget. Um, and all of these amounts are subject to change based on actual state funding, enrollments, special education services as required by PPT and IEP. I just wanna call everyone's attention to that part there on Appendix C. Appendix D are our projected federal and state grants. And again, these are only an estimate. Uh, actual amounts may vary based on a variety of factors. Appendix E, uh, many board members may recall, we had crafted this uh, in accompaniment with uh, Board of Finance um, a number of years ago. Kasal and I worked on it a little bit more this year because Really, there were pieces that I was struggling to understand. So if I'm struggling to understand it, I'm certain that others are struggling to understand it. So you'll see down at the bottom, uh, you know, we brought the titles down again. We put the total cost of education, less the grants and what the net cost of education is to the town of Bolton. And then the 2.94% increase. And um, that bottom piece, the federal and state grant revenues, you know, we had been, we thought it was just important to see that. And so that's there. And then Appendix F is our enrollment projection uh, for next year, which then brings me to choice enrollment for next year, which I would like to talk about next. So currently, <laughs> this recommendation is based on some data that I just, that recently, just prior to me providing you this information, I received about the number of uh, students who are interested in certain grades. I will be receiving an update. It is my recommendation that, um, if you could scroll down to the bottom of it, Joe, please. 
Um, there likely will be additional sibling requests, which we have open seats up for siblings before in various grades where we could and where it was appropriate. Um, I also think that we should open additional seats based on interest, specifically in Bolton, where Bolton is a family's number one or number two choice in grades where we can accommodate these requests. Our choice numbers are down considerably. Um, you know, I think a lot of that has had to do with the pandemic. And I think some of it has had to do with other towns in our geographic location, pulling from the same um, section of Hartford who have also come on to open up choice seats as well. So I, I would like to say to you that I'd like to base that decision on the most up-to-date information I have by the time I have to file this, which I believe is the end of February, um, in order for us to qualify for a special bonus if you um, put in your choice seat um, application by that date. So I'd like to do it based on the numbers that they're providing to us versus just sort of a shot in the dark. Does that make sense to everybody? Are you, are you saying that what is on, well, that, that what you just showed us is likely to increase the numbers? But, but yes, I think so, because they are in the process of actively recruiting. They've changed their process. So it's more of an online type piece. So hopefully that garners more interest. The chef case has been settled. There is a want and desire um, as a result of the settlement of that case to open up more seats um, in all districts. Um, it is potential that there may be additional financial um, incentive. I know that the legislature is going to be taking that up this session for opening up more seats. So I think it behooves us um, to certainly, you know, look long and hard at that for areas where we can open seats, which potentially could also mean opening seats in ninth grade. And I think it will have to be based on, you know, what we see for interest in coming to school in Bolton. So I'm hopeful that these numbers will be larger than what I'm presenting tonight. This was based on, you know, the latest data that I had when I, when I shared this information with you a couple of weeks ago. And I'm hoping for an update in another 10 days or so, maybe a little longer. Depends on when they send it to me. <laughs> Given where we stand with Columbia students, it seems like a reasonable, uh, reasonable thing to do to open up more choice seats, try to offset some of that. Agreed. Okay, and then the last thing um, I have to show you uh, tonight would be the projected budget for grants for next year. So as you can see in our IDEA uh, 611 grant, most of that is in salaries and benefits, a large percentage. Um, the 619 IDEA grant um, goes to supplies. There's very you know, strict guidelines that we have to follow for IDEA. So we are following within the guidelines of what we're supposed to be doing there. This is what we're projecting currently. Uh, for open choice, and you can see the number of FTEs we have in the IDA 611 and in open choice, as well as in the CHEF grant. Um, the team mentor um, monies that we get from the state, uh, Title I, uh, same thing, and, and that has very uh, stringent requirements that we have to follow, so we have put it in the categories where we are in compliance with those uh, pieces, as well as Title II. Um, title IV, as you know, um, in the last several years, we have received a Title IV grant for $10,000. That's really about supplies, new innovative things that we can do. We can't put the same thing in it year after year. So we wait to make sure that we're getting it. <laughs> and then we look to see what new and innovative things that we can um, do to improve a program or programs uh, each year. And then the Title III grant is a very small small amount of money that goes towards supplies. And we have a total of 4.7 FTEs projected in grants for next year. Questions here? 
So the the dollar amounts that are reflected in each of the columns um, so, so the, let's just take the supplies, the $41,795 that we will spend on supplies from our grants. Is that 41,000 accounted for in the various program descriptions, the supply lines in the various program descriptions? No, what you're seeing in your budget book is just general fund. Correct. So this is on top of it. Okay. Yep, correct. This supplements. Correct. Okay. All right. So I want to be, I just want to review what I believe that I am providing to the board prior to our next meeting. The stipends we talked about, Daryl and Joe with the list of clubs and athletics and number of students involved or projected number in each. The athletic comparison salaries and the actual versus budgeted for operations and maintenance for the last two years. Is there anything else that I did not keep track of that I am providing to you? Or did I get it all? I just wanted to see what we're doing for um you know, the mental health arena. Right. We're going to do that in a board presentation, though. In March? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Okay. All right. All right. Does anybody have any other questions or comments for me for this evening? Thank you. This is... Yet again, a uh, really well-prepared budget uh, q and I think was longer and <laughs> more expensive than ever before. Sorry. <laughs> so, but no, I, it was great. It answered a, a lot of, <laughs> believe it or not, a lot of questions I had. Well, that's good to know. One of these years, I'm going to try to answer them all, Chris, before I retire. That's my goal. <laughs> Look at Andrew's face. <laughs> Anybody else? Any other comments? How about you can't retire until you answer all the questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <No. laughs> uh, all right. All right. So um, we are on for our next budget meeting on the 24th at 630. And I'm we sorry, are. That's the mask where we also discuss the budget. Correct. And we are potentially on for a meeting on Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Okay. I want to thank you all very much. Could I ask my team to stay on for just a minute? But board members, good night. We need a motion. All right. thank you. you do. Yes, yeah, sorry. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Second. Uh, Aye. Thank you. Good night. Uh, Aye. Any questions?